Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to plot folded data. Um, so we have our, our very authentic wet fold. It's still damp from being outside. Um, so this is a, a, a little sample of, of Moyne meta sediments. It's from the Morar group. It's collected close to Vacasty Bridge. Um, and, and what we can see here is, is, is a, a folded surface, uh, which is our, our metamorphic foliation. Um, now, it, it may have been bedding, but it's difficult to tell uh, in this sample. So uh, we're going to refer to this as, as, as the foliation from here on in. And, and it's this folded surface that we want to plot and, and examine. So I'm going to demonstrate using this, this small scale uh, fold uh, involving metamorphic foliation. So, okay, so we're going to pretend this is all in the field. So um, I have the stair in it here. So we're going to pretend this is in situ and that this is north. Okay, so I'm going to pretend this way is north. So what we can see is that the fold axis is plunging gently to the southeast. Okay, plunging gently to the southeast. So we would measure that, okay, as you would measure any linear data. So you measure the azimuth um, and then you measure the plunge. So if we have the plunge and azimuth measured, we can see this plunging gently to the southeast in our case, and that plunge should appear somewhere in this region of the stereo. I won't actually measure it and plot it, but we would we would expect that to appear somewhere in that region of the stereo net. So somewhere down there. Okay the other thing that you would measure here is this this folded surface here. So in our case we're we're talking about the, the foliation which is folded. Alright. And you would in the field measure measure the strike and dip of this foliation whenever you encounter it. So you could see if you had lots of this stuff you would have most most of your data would be measuring this plane and this 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 one's similar and then you'd have a few results from from the from the, the the shorter limb and as you can see the strike will vary as you go around here and the dip will also be slightly different as you go around this um, and you collect lots of strikes and dips and we want to plot those now two ways you can plot strike and dip of a plane um, you can plot it as a grid circle or you can plot it as a pole to the plane um, and that was demonstrated in the previous video um, so with lots of data it would be wise to plot poles to the plane uh, because lots and lots of great circles will become quite tangled and difficult to read um, but there's also another another reason for plotting the, the poles to the plane so you can very clearly get you can get the the, the statistical fold axis from that so um, just to remind you about poles to plane versus grid circles. So if we look at this surface here, if we measure the strike and dip of that, so strike and then measure the dip, um, and we plotted that as a grid circle. So it's dipping, dipping sort of moderately to the to the south or south southeast. So we'd expect the grid circle for that to plot around here somewhere. Okay? So remember the grid circle bows in the direction of dip. But the pole to that plane is normal to that. So Remember, normal is is kind of is, is like perpendicular in 3D. So, so the pole to that is normal to that. So the pole, if we look down the direction I'm pointing in with the pencil, the pole goes the other way. So whereas the, the plane would plot as a grid circle over here, the pole would, would would plot on the other side. So a grid circle you count in from the edge. The pole you count in out from the middle. Okay, so the pole would would appear over here somewhere. Um, likewise for this shorter limb, so the shorter limb is dipping quite steeply to the northeast. So the grid circle for that would plot somewhere through here, quite steeply to the northeast. And likewise, the pole normal to that would plot on the other side. So whereas the, the grid circle will plot steeply to the, the northeast, the pole would would occur somewhere over here on this side. So. It's worth noting that I predicted the the fold axis, the lineation, plunging azimuth to appear here, and the grid circle for this plane is going to come around here somewhere. I'll just sketch it in lightly, just just very broadly sketched in. I'm not sure that. And then this surface, quite steep, steeply, steep, uh, steeply dipping to the northeast. So the grid circle for that will come through here. So just sketch it in. You'll notice that they intersect where I predicted the fold axis to be. 
Okay, so if we, if we carried on plotting these, we'd get quite a tangle of grid circles. They'd all intersect in this area, but this would be quite difficult to read. So a much neater, a much more efficient way of doing this is to plot poles to the plane. So remember, poles to the plane are normal. So here's the plane, and the pole will be normal to that. So the pole normal to that plots over here. Likewise, over here, etc. So you'll notice that as I sweep the pencil around, the pencil itself sweeps around parallel to a plane, defining another imaginary surface. Okay, as I sweep the pencil around, defining individual datum points, the pencil defines a separate plane. And that surface that I'm talking about is the profile plane for the fold. And this sample happens to be broken roughly along the profile plane. So this surface here, as you can see, is normal to the fold axis. So that, that's really the trick of this. So once you plot pole to the plane, we would expect each point to define a grid circle. And then the normal to that is our fold axis. So I'm just gonna, I'll just put some pretend data in uh, to, to, to mimic what this would look like plotted up. So I, I'm predicting the fold axis down here. So if I put in some mock poles to, poles to planes, so they're gonna come through here. So I'd see some data plotting. They might be quite irregular. Okay. And I would see a preponderance of those that are dipping uh, gently to the side. So there'd be a preponderance of data probably clustering in, in this zone. But we get a few maybe plotting out. So on our plotted data, we'd see perhaps a cluster of poles around here with a few leaking out here. But the key thing is that if we if we sort of jimmy this around a little bit, we can find a common grid circle and we would mark that in as, as best as we can. It's, it's, it is semi-quantitative, but you mark it in as best you can. I'll just get this a little bit more clearly. So we're marking in our grid circle and this grid circle is our is our profile plane. And this profile plane, in this example, is dipping steeply to the northwest. It's an imaginary plane, remember. But if we compare that to what I was saying as a profile plane here, you can see this profile plane here is dipping steeply to the northwest. So this is this is our profile plane. Then the norm then the normal to that, the pole to this plane, coincides with the fold axis. Okay? So don't don't get confused at this point. I'm talking about normal to this plane coinciding with a lineation. So the plunge and azimuth of this lineation, which you can measure, so you would measure this, the plunge and azimuth of this lineation happens to be parallel to the pole of this plane here. So this plane has a strike and a dip, much like any other plane. But the pole to that is parallel to the plunge and azimuth of this lineation. I can, I can demonstrate that, so I, I predicted the fold axis plunged over here. So if I put this grid circle back, and remember getting a pole to a grid circle, you count 90. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. They coincide.